today's show, we're making some bezels and bales with polymer clay. I'm here with Cindy Holt. Hi, Cindy. Hi, how's it going, Katie? Great, I'm glad you're here. I'm really excited to show you some cool ways to make some bezels for your polymer clay creations. All right, how do we get started? All right, the first one I want to show you is called the Mr. Jan Montarsi Easy Back. And this is a great bale for when you're baking on the hollow bead mold and you have these rounded shapes. You know, you can drill a hole in it, but this makes a really cool kind of floating feature yeah, to so it. Yeah, so then you can pass your chain or other stringing material Whatever through the back. Whatever you want to through it. Depending on what angle you choose on here and the size of the hole de determines what, how big you can put your uh, hanging piece through. Okay. So let me show you how you make it real quick. All right. My favorite way is to use this circle cutter. I cut a circle. And now this is the important part that sometimes people get wrong. I'm gonna cut a notch up here and a notch up here. My notches are not in the center of the circle, they're up at the top. Okay. And then this piece would come over. Let me see which one I can put this on. Looks like this is probably the one that it's gonna be the best on. And you can see as I press this down on here, now I've got those nice open holes once it's baked to run the chain through. And the dimensionality too is gonna make that lay exactly. better against but the But you know, I've actually put these on the back of flat pieces too, and oh, it really? kinda gives you that nice little tilt to it so it's just not flat against your chest. Okay. And let me see, we have a piece right here. I'm gonna take this one, and this is how I attach them once they're baked. These are my handy dandy tweezers because I don't know about you, but I don't like to get glue on my fingers. No, it can be a mess. Ooh, and I just, ooh. And I'm gonna put glue right along this edge and right along this edge. We don't want it in those notches because you know we're not gonna wait very long to put the chain or whatever right, we're putting on this, soon, right? Huh? Yes, of course. I like that you can make it coordinate with the pendant too. So well, I'm it, using the scrap. to flip over. You yeah. know how I it am, looks pretty. we use every piece. So I'm using the scrap from the top part to make very this piece. Cool. It makes it look a little bit more finished yeah, too. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. There we okay. go. So that is the easy bath. So let's move on to a little bit different kind of bale. And I'm gonna show you how to make this beautiful opal pendant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend just the cut side of this. I'm not gonna bend the top part because that can break the cutter. And you just kind of put in little shapes here. I like to use the plastic pliers like this, the nylon ones. They work really well. Oh, see, I bent this one right on the seam. Oh. There I go, I got it fixed. It looks like it's okay. Now the top looks normal. This side is the bent side. And I'm gonna show you how to make this beautiful opal pendant. So this is about a medium size layer. This is two of the widest layers of the uh, opal clay. And I'm gonna put this on. This is called deli paper or candy paper. And what this does is when we push the cutter down through it, it rounds the edges so you don't have those super clean, oh, sharp. Nice. Yeah, again, you know, we're looking for the organic shape. Normally I put a tile or something over this to push down okay. so that I'm not bruising my hands, but you know, I'm, I'm suffering for you here, Katie, right, okay? suffering for your art. I am. I'm gonna push it down and I twist it just a little bit because these are not quite flat on the bottom now. And when I lift this up, see how that's pulled it down over the edges there? Yeah. That gives you that more natural shape to it. It looks like stone. Yeah. There we go. And I can take my blade and trim some of this off. Now the mylar flakes in this opal can be tricky. You don't want to try to pull them out. So what I do is I take little craft scissors and just kind of trim them. Oh. And I trim them before I bake them. Somebody asked me, can you do it after? And I said, sure. I said, but you know like the bridal moment? I said, our bridal moments for polymer clay people is when we take things out of the oven. And it's safe it's and it's sound aha. and it hasn't burned and it's the aha, it's the best aha moment we have. So I try to make it as nice as I can so I can have my bridal moment with my clay. Yeah, you don't <laughs> want to pull it out and then have to do a bunch of filing, it's kind of a bummer. Well, and this doesn't sand because it's mylar. Okay, so and you if would you try have to, trim to it. pull the piece out, you can risk taking a chunk of the clay out okay. with it, especially if it's up towards the top. So we have one piece here and that piece. Now we're gonna put our bezels around these two pieces, okay? And I've pre-cut, these are just thin layers of clay that I've just taken the, the long side of my blade and cut. Pulled the blade tight so it stays straight and cut these. Let's trim an edge up. And we're gonna run it around. 
you look at it and decide which way this is going to go because, of course, you want your seams to be more towards the bottom than the top, correct? Sure. And I like that to show I want it to cover these edges here, but I don't want it to cover too much on the top. Okay. Because we just worked hard making that. All right. Nice. I'm just butting those up against each other. I got a crack here because my clay has gotten cooled off a little bit. That's what we get for planning ahead, right? Yeah, I know. And that's okay because I can take anything that's round and just sort of fix this, blend it right back in. That's a great tip because sometimes we get interrupted when we're working. You yeah. know, you might set it aside and need to come back and work on it some more. UPS could be coming with your clay order. Right. <laughs> If I wanted to, I could also texture this oh, before that would be I put fun it on. Too. Yeah, that would be really neat. I just thought of that. I want to do that now. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just pushing my seam together here. Again, blending it. Where's my purple guy? Let's put one on him. And so you don't have to use any kind of clay in between, like as a layer of adhesive or anything. This is going to stick to itself when you bake it. Yes. You can use uh, some of the liquid clay on here if you want to, but I'm pushing this on so firmly that it's, it's really kind of going to stay. Okay. And the other thing is I mix different colors in different uh, brands of clay uh, to make my colors. I have three different brands of clay in my color mixes here. Well, they look great. I like the colors. Okay, we've got that guy on. Now we're gonna mount it. I do a very simple bale mount on this. This is literally a strip of clay with a loop formed in it. So I have a thicker piece of clay here. So what I'm gonna do is trim this to give me a straight edge and gently, gently roll this over to create a loop. Okay. Just like that. Come on. Once I have the loop in place, then I'm going to position my pieces on here, and I've kind of picked this for my design. That looks good. Yeah. Mm, do I want to go this way or this way? Let's go this way. Get back on there. There we go. And now this is ready to bake, but before I bake it, I take an index card and cut it and fold it so I can slide it on either side here to support these so that they don't slump. I want them to stay nice and straight. Okay, so while they're baking, that will, that will prop it up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And then once I bake it, I can just put my um, cord through here or whatever I want, and I'm good to go. Looks great. Yeah. That's a good way to trap some organic shapes, too. It is. Because I like it. It's hard to make a bezel for those. Mm -hmm. And these are very show-stopping pieces. Some of my friends that have made them said, oh my gosh, I get stopped everywhere. People go, oh, look at your necklace. Well, it's so unique. It's one of a kind. Yeah. Now we're going to do a little bit more intricate bale. OK. And we're going to start. I'm going to show you how to silk screen. Great. How fun. I didn't know you could silk screen on polymer clay. Oh, yeah. And uh, this particular clay that I'm using has a surface t that takes the paint really well and it dries quickly, which oh, wow. you know where I live, that's important. That is important. Yes. So we have a silk screen here and a paddle and our paint. The paddle normally comes like this. I cut it in half because half just fits on these mandalas. And I always joke it gives me twice as much to lose. There you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I the, like that you plan ahead for that. Yeah. And you know the credit cards you get in the mail? I mistakenly get those AARP things. You oh, know, weird. I don't want those. Yeah, I don't no. know why it comes to me. No. They're great to use as a paddle if, in a pinch. Good idea. Yeah. There's a shiny side and a dull side to these. You want the shiny side down. And I'm going to take a piece of paper towel here. I have really expensive paper towels in my garage for silk screening and, and my craft work and really crummy ones in the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to have priorities. You I know. know. That's true. Just like my oven was nicer in my garage that I use for clay than it was for food in the house. So I'm going to press this down so it's firm on there. Now, the one thing that a lot of people do when they silk screen is they use too much paint. These come in a handy squeeze bottle. I'm going to squeeze right across there, and you can see that it's just the width of the piece here. I'm going to put the paddle on here and slide it down. Just like this. I don't want to hold it upright. I want it to slide against there so you can't even hear it going on there. I don't want to do this. Okay, so you're just a gentle motion yes. over the whole time. and when I peel it up, that looks voila. great. Now, would you please put this face down for me in that yes. bowl of water? 
At home, I take my silk screen immediately over to the sink and rinse it under running water. But in a pinch, put it face down in a bowl of water okay. until you get a chance to do that. My paddles, I always dry on a paper towel because water is the enemy. If you're silk screening more than once, I actually do it like a surgeon. I come back, I look at my silk screen, which I tuck into here in my nice paper towel, put on my jeans and gently dry. I look at it and go, no water. There's no water on my screen. This is dry. My fingers are dry. Drops of water, any moisture on your oh. nails will get you. Because you don't want to mess up the design. Right, on your piece. yeah, any okay. little bit like that. So while this piece is drying, I'm going to take a piece here that I've already screened and it's dried. We have a circle cutter that just exactly fits this. And if you'll hand me the hollow bead maker there. Once again, I would heat this up by sitting it on top of my oven while it preheats. And I'm gonna put this on here, use the flat palm of my hand. <laughs> this is why I like them warm. Yeah, and good thing it's dry too. Yeah. So you just press it down until yeah. it makes You just press it down until it's firm on here. And then okay. you go ahead and bake it. Okay. Once it's baked, we have these beautiful domed pieces like this. And, and the paint's totally permanent then. Absolutely. It's acrylic paint. You can use any acrylic paint. Oh, You'll okay. find you like some better than others. Uh, sort of medium body to thick body seems to be my, my favorite ones. Okay. Now this is a circle that's been cut out that's just a little bit larger than the original circle. And I want just about that much space around it. All right. I'm gonna press it firmly into place. And I'm going to extrude these beautiful golden ropes of clay. This is an extruder. I've loaded it with the clay, I've loaded it with the die that I want to make the size I want, and I'm just going to twist this. So this is a super fancy clay garlic press. Yes, <laughs> exactly. All right, so you'll just make long strings of clay with this. Right, I tend to extrude between 10, maybe 16 inches. If I get longer than that, it's kind of hard to keep track of and keep it from stretching on me. Okay. So now when I wrap this around, I'm gonna designate this as my top. And I'm just gonna wrap this piece around so that they overlap right at the top. I'm gonna to take the blade. I'm cutting through these two, but not through that bottom layer. Now, I already know this is stretched just a tiny bit, so I take a chunk off. So that you get a really flat join there? Yes. I'm not gonna to be too concerned about this joint. Oh, okay. And I'll show you why later. Okay. You can really get obsessed over those things. I'm going to add the same color on here. I could put a different color on here. I could be put, cool too. Yeah, I could put one of the purple wraps out here, the turnip color on there, and it would be beautiful. Okay. I want to make sure that I get it right up there against it. There we go. Make sure it's all up against the edge, and we're going to cut it again at the same spot. Nice. And I know I'm going to cut a chunk out, right? I don't know why. I really don't, but it just seems to work. So, you know, you go, go with, with it. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't question it, just go with it. Okay, now we need a bail on this, right? Yeah, we need the hanger. Yeah, and this is the part I said, it's, it's like, like dealing with a cat. I'm gonna stroke it and gently get it to do what I want it to do. I'm gonna take three pieces here and just do my little stroke on mm -hmm. it. Warm them up, get them all into place here. Then I'm gonna trim it. Just like a cat. Gonna do what it's gonna do, right? It takes a message. Yeah. And this gets rolled up just like we did the other bale. Okay. And you just touch it. Now I would bake this piece sitting next to this piece standing up. Oh, okay. Um, for some reason, if you lay this down, it comes loose like that, and this bends. Okay, and since we did this one ahead, it's a little cracky too yeah. at this point. Can you just rub it with your tool again, or would you start over? I'd probably just start over with okay. it, yeah. But sometimes what I do is when it's nice and warm and I have good, you know, good, well-conditioned clay, I make a bunch of these, and I have a little container sitting on my table, and I throw them in there. Oh, that's a great tip. Yeah. Yeah, so you just have them ready to go. Mm hmm Okay, mm -hmm. so. You know, sometimes you have a day where everything's just on a roll, you know? Oh, yeah. Got to go with the flow that's and right. do it. Now, here's my big trick for this. See the seam here? Yeah. We have this guy that we've baked, right? Okay. Eh, let's take, I like the guy you had. All right. I'm going to pop that open so it comes open here. See? 
So this is already baked and you can open it a little bit without it breaking? Yeah, it's flexible. It's amazing. And I'm gonna put it behind here, pop this up, and slide it right over those seams. All right, and then how does it stay in place? I'm gonna use a little bit of super glue okay. on it. Once I'm sure that I have the fit right on here and I know where I'm going with it, I'll put a little bit of glue on here. Okay. Just a little squiggle down there. And then I kind of tilt it down and bring the lip up first so that I'm sure that I have the lip where I want it. And then I press the back on. And if you want to, you can take a little bit of the glue on a toothpick and put it on the bottom edge of this so that you get your position right where you want it. Okay. And here's another one. You know how I was talking about doing two different colors? I have two different colors on this one. And I could just, again, pop the bail, bring it up over that, and I'm good to go. Great. It's yeah. completely custom design. Yeah. All right, and you have one more tip for us, I right? have one more tip for you. Okay. Save my little guys. I like them. <laughs> this is a bezel mold, and they can be kind of tricky to use because of this big flat surface, because the bezel's all down in here. So what I've discovered is the circle cutters exactly fit on these, too. I would use probably this one for here also. Okay. So it's just a little bit bigger. I'm going to wipe it down with a damp paper towel again, F again, focusing on that inside area there. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is as wide open as I can on my pasta machine. Now, this is something I always forget. I have a nice, pretty top. I need to check the bottom and make sure that it's pretty, too. I can't tell you how many times I've been caught with that. Now, check this out. This exactly fits in here. How cool. And I'm just going to press it down really firmly. Kind of pull the clay from the center to fill in those bezel parts there. We want that nice, pretty bezel on there. Okay. And then I stretch, and I stretch, and I stretch, and gently peel it out. Perfect bezel. Awesome. And then you would bake this, and you can put anything in here that you want to. Sure. You could put more clay in here, or mm -hmm. you could do a photograph. Right. You can actually bake in this silicone mold if you want to, but I prefer to do it this way so that I can take my piece and put it in there and just kind of like spin it around and get it just perfectly snugged up against it yeah. before I do the final baking. And also, since you have it like this, you can take it and texture this if you want to. Oh yeah, so you can even put your stamp on it a little bit more and make oh, it yeah. even more your style. Maybe a couple little rhinestones on the edge. Nice, really I like it the out. way you're going with this. <laughs> this is good. Let's take a look at the copper and turquoise necklace because that one is so pretty and it's another example of that it's same another technique example. we just talked about. Yeah, where I took actually um, a ball stylus and just poked around the side there. Yeah, that looks and good. And used it and then I used a little bit of a turquoise antique paint over it. Really pretty. And the bracelet in front is another idea of using those organic shapes to create another piece of jewelry, too. Again, that was a really pretty piece of scrap that I had that I just said, I have to use this for something. So I used my organic shapes on it and then a little bit of gold paint.